Warning, the following video is incredibly long, so I've provided time codes in the description. There you can find different days, different parks, and a bunch of other stuff. With all that out of the way, let's get started. Alright, so on the trip we stayed at the Disneyland Hotel, which was the original hotel for Disneyland. It was a really nice place, a whole lot of cool different wings. We got your usual things for magic hours or movie nights. We just missed the Chorus 3 movie night. We were this close. All of the different wings were named after different original lands, so you had the Fantasy Tower, you had the Adventure Tower, which is where we were staying, and the Frontier Tower. The room was really nice. The pillows said a dream is a wish your heart makes while you're fast asleep. And up top, above the beds, we had this huge thing of the castle, and when you pressed a light at the base of the lamp down there, sorry that I don't have any video of this. I didn't record it for some reason. I thought I did, though. It played a little musical cue, and then all of these stars and fireworks lit up, and it looked awesome. This is a really nice place that I shoot the footage of the room. The room's really nice. We're off to downtown Disney, and then we're gonna we're gonna get some lunch there. We might go straight to the park. I don't know, man. We'll see. All right, and we are off to Disneyland, like normal Disneyland. We just had lunch. We picked up our free lanyards with the Star Wars ones because Disney keeps pampering to me. I uh, briefly looked at some pins. They have all the same cars ones as last year, but with a new cruise one. And if you know me, you know I'm not the biggest fan of cruise, but the pin looks really cool. It's his cruise control, and it's got the Dynago cruise. The first ride we went on was Peter Pan's Flight, a classic, although the wait times are always extremely long. That's just because it has a really slow load capacity. As compared to Florida, this one spends a whole lot more time in the aerial sections, and by aerial I mean A-E-R-I-A-L, not the mermaid. But the Florida one doesn't have this whole thing where you go and see this huge uh, aerial shot of Neverland. Good luck sleeping tonight. All right, we're going on the Pinocchio ride, which I've never been on before because it's not in Florida and we didn't do it last time. Uh, so if I don't come back because I'm in the stomach of a whale, um, sorry. <laughs> Alright, so I couldn't become Thor, but, you know. So here in the Emporium, they have recent cores. Check that out, guys. Uh, that is cool. I've got this whole case, I believe. This is the Kevin Ryvan case. Uh, just remembering that I have uh, Mia and Tia and the other new two packs. That's nice. Which are other Disney store cars? I just have this two pack, which I have no interest in. These guys, the trackers, and this three pack, which you could buy at the Disney store. I think mine has a lot of stock though. But right, I've got my first purchase uh, made. We've got a pin with the Dynaco logo, which is really cool. We didn't. I think this is new for this year, like because it wasn't uh, there last year in Florida, but Dynaco pin. And after about four rides, we are out of here to go. Cool, because we've got the pools in the hotel. We've got dinner reservations at six, so we'll come back, stay later. Uh, so what, well, we went on the Peter Pan ride, Pinocchio, and Snow White. I think that's it. And so here's the lanyards that we all got for free, which is for Galaxy's Edge, as you can see by that little pin that comes with it, which is pretty nice one. Last year, I actually got 
a pin for Galaxy's Edge for Black Spire Outpost before it was open because apparently the tip to good marketing is selling things over a year before the parks can reopen. Here's the Dynaco pin. Let's take a quick look at it. There's not much of a review to be had. I reviewed the pins I got last year, but this is literally just the Dynaco logo. It's the dark blue. Seems closer to the design from the first movie, although the design doesn't change, but I think the dinosaur is a little bit lighter in Cars 3. There we go, there's the lanyard. Just got the same design repeated with Millennium Falcon and then the Galaxy's Edge. Logo. There are two X-Wings in the background as well. And then uh, the Disneyland logo. Here's the pin. Let's get that out of there. Alright, so there that is, and then there's the Dynaco one. And we're going back into Disneyland because we got a dinner reservation there, like I said uh, earlier. So we booked a Fast Pass for Indiana Jones, which I actually never went on for some reason. So we'll see. I think there are like eight different endings for us. So I'll be interested. You know, I'm going to be making a whole lot of comparisons between uh, Disneyland and Disney World. It's just because I've been in Disney World so many more times. But up next is the Alice in Wonderland ride, a really great dark ride that I wish was in. Uh, Florida as well. As you can see, they have some nice stuff outside of it. There's also a whole um, Queen of Hearts, King of Hearts themed bathroom where the cards or the stall doors. Then there's the teacup ride, something that I never go on, but it's right across from the Alice Dark ride, so I decided to show it. Anyway, here's a bit of ride footage. <laughs> Alice in Wonderland is just this really weird movie, and the ride captures the spirit of it perfectly as you go from room to room, seeing all the different things from the movie, like the flowers here. Another really cool thing about this ride is that you're actually sent outside for a little bit of it. And the Alice ride is one of the few rides that has its original ticket booth back when Disney used to do uh, tickets for individual rides. And the ticket booth is that big mushroom that now has the book on it. But on the inside of the mushroom, you can see these six shoes belonging to the caterpillar, which sparked a whole rumor that he was originally sitting up there. He never was. Maybe he was planned to be, judging by the shoes being there. Who knows? Alright, well, as we got the jumbo ass roll, please keep your hands on our feet, legs inside the boat at all times, and make sure to watch your kids, because I won't. Alright, well, welcome to the Jumbo Cruise, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Adrian, and I'll be your skipper for this afternoon. And if you don't laugh at my jokes, I'll be your swimming instructor, okay? Alright, so we begin by entering the rainforest. I'm sure you guys felt that nice mist on your face, right? Okay, well, guess what? That mess actually contains some of the world's rarest bacteria, so congratulations, everybody. You're now the proud owner of your own piece of malaria. Yay! Yay, okay, hey, right here on the right. Uh, yeah, it looks like there's not that much of a line for Indiana Jones, so I don't know what the heck you guys are doing here. Yeah, it's a, it's a much better ride. Okay, right here on the left, that's the Indo-Chinese tiger. And now, can anybody tell me why tigers are striped? No, so they can't be spotted. Oh, don't worry, everybody. Let the jokes get worse. The cobras. Oh, and oh, we're now doing the sacred Indian elephant bathing pool. So if anybody wants to take pictures, go ahead. And they've all got their trunks on. Now, uh, some people say the animals here aren't real, but I can tell you right now that that's a croc. Now, if you look there in the very back, you can even see a little baby elephant bathing underneath the full moon. Look at that. Oh. Yeah, here's an elephant in the shower. And uh, here's a little baby elephant. Look at that baby elephant, guys. Oh. Yeah, I hope he's not black. Uh, and right here on the right, we have an elephant that we call a squirt. You know why we call him squirt? No, because we're not creative here at the Jungle Cruise and he squirts the boat. That's it. No, he's good. You're good now. He's done. Oh, no, he's coming back up. Everybody get down. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay. Now I like monkeys. Now I'm going to 
there's uh there's one trying on a hat uh and like there's a mama monkey with a baby monkey uh and there was a monkey with a gun uh Oh, 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 
called cannibalism and hilarious. Okay, now ladies and gentlemen, the scariest part of our journey, the return of civilization. So as we approach the dock, please keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the boat at all times, okay? All right, well, congratulations, folks. You survived the world-famous Jungle Cruise. Yay! All right. Okay, well, I know that's over. All right, well, is this anybody's first time on the Jungle Cruise? Anybody's first time? Yeah, me too. Yeah, you know, I actually enjoyed myself so much, I think I'm going to go on again. And again. And again, for the rest of my life. Yeah, my parents are very proud of it. After that great ride in the jungle, we went over to Indiana Jones. This ride is awesome. I was never on it before this trip. You know what? I'll just let me from the past tell you all how great it is. Many visitors are claiming loved ones have disappeared inside. Could it be they looked into the eyes of the idol? Alright, well that was great. I think I've said enough. Way too bumpy to uh, obviously be filmed, but that was awesome. And there are multiple different rides. There are three doors in the beginning. Each time you could go through a different door. Pirates of the Caribbean here in California is a total step up from Florida. Not only is it longer, but it also tells much more of a coherent story, that story being the life of these pirates in reverse. It starts with them as skeletons and ends with them alive and happy. Of this bewitched treasure. Dead men tell no tale. My camera was really struggling with this ride just because of how dark it is, and you keep on moving to areas where things are either a little darker or a little lighter. It just really messed up with the camera, so I'll only be showing a little bit more footage. This was the scene that they added in last year to replace the auction they added uh, this female pirate in. The animatronic looks really good, maybe a little bit out of place, just because she looks a lot better than everybody else around her. Although most of the footage for this ride was just a blurry mess, the ending scene with Jack Sparrow actually turned out pretty well. Yo, ho, yo, ho, a Once we got out of Pirates, it was pretty dark out, and we decided to make our way out of the park for the night. And while we were making our way out, we caught a glimpse of the Main Street Electrical Parade, which was brought back for a limited time. That was actually playing most nights when we left Disneyland. Although we weren't very close to it because we were on the way out, you could still see Alice up here talking on this mushroom. I think she actually had her own microphone and wasn't just lip-syncing to the parade track. And after Alice and the Caterpillar left, Cinderella was up next. And on a side note, I'm really glad that I was filming so much of this trip, because if I wasn't, classic moments like this would have gone undocumented. Cinderella, I love you! <laughs> yeah, I have no idea who that guy is. The Main Street Emporium store has this really nice Toy Story window display, among a few other ones, which I was able to catch a glimpse of on the way out. Also on the way out, as the parade continued on, I was able to see some of these guys up here. People dressed as the mice from Cinderella in these huge light-up outfits. Because I, as a three-year-old, would love to be approached by a girl in a mouse costume. <laughs> now, I'm not much of a go-sit-watch-a-parade guy. Uh, I'm more of a walk out of the park while the parade is going. Uh, see what happens type of guy. That was a really nice, that was the Main Street Electrical Parade or whatever. The current equivalent to what they have. I think it might be the original Electrical Parade. It's really nice. The music was kind of on the quiet side. Everything was, everything was actually really nice. Um, I do just want to mention that uh, 
the Disney Parks version of Alice might be a good decade too old compared to that huge character in the universe, but um <laughs> never mind, just put that out. <laughs> just always wanted to point that out. So this is the world of the Disney store, so it's like their big one. Um same case. You got everyone in this case. There's really nothing special. You've all seen it before. You've seen it, I've seen it, we have seen it. Uh, nothing too special. So I'm gonna cut the clip before I get muted out by Twitch music. As for uh, normal Disney store cars, it's a really bad selection. We'll have to see tomorrow in Cars Land. And that was it for the first day. We didn't have a full day. In fact, we got there at around 12 o'clock since that's when the flight landed. But it was a pretty great day. All right, it's the next morning. We're here in the uh, gift shop of the hotel. Look, what is it? Uh, it is the same exact case again. And in this are well stocked. And that was Metallic Florida Ramon, who I finally got. The case that he was in basically skipped over my stores. That's a weird trend with my stores. The first case of the year never goes to them. I eventually found it in June, but still no Metallic Florida Ramon. And after that, it was off to Disney California Adventure, where Cars Land is. I'll go pet it. This whole land is just so immersive. Everything's so movie accurate. In fact, the map of Cars Land is what I based my own Radiator Springs diorama off of. It even has the abandoned buildings and Doc's garage. Everything is there, including McQueen. Easy on the paint job. Lightning used to use his Cars 2 look, but in early 2017 they replaced it with his Cars 3 paint job. Those are the cones, uh, Buzz Under the Cone from Toy Story 2. We had some postcards also, and McQueen, just kind of there. Everything here down to the music is perfect. Inside Flows, you've got a bunch of 50s, 60s music. In fact, you have 50s and 60s music everywhere. It really matches the tone of the music in the Cars movies. Doc's garage acts as additional seating. You can see footage of it here with all of his different licenses and medical degrees and everything. As well as some newspaper articles from his past life. HUD does it again, which I believe was probably added in for Cars 3, unless it was always there, because they don't call him HUD until Cars 3. And that newspaper article that I just quickly walked by is the actual one from the first Cars. And here are Doc's three piston cups. Lightning mentions that he had the most wins in a single season, and it says that right underneath his name, although you can barely see it. 27 wins in 1952, and so you have his Piston Cups from 51, 52, and 53, and they're huge. That's the cool thing about this. Everything was built to the scale of you being a car. The doorways are pretty big. You could see, like, Ramon's hoods in his window, as well as Mater's hoods in the line for Mater's Junkyard Jamboree and the wheels. Everything is massive. Everything is to scale of the Lightning and the Mater that drive around. The first ride of the day was the Luigi ride. Previously his flying tires, now his cousins dancing. And the line is full of Easter eggs with posters, 
from Cars 2, including one that kind of looks like Mama Bernoulli. I previously showed the stand that Lightning's propped up on when Guido changes his tires. Speaking of tires, you can see all the different tires here, all with their own names, Lightyear. And just like in the first movie, there's a curtained off area for the Fettuccine Alfredo white walls. That's just the best name ever. See, I made my way through the line. There's a few more little Easter eggs. The tires with the Y, I believe, is a reference to Cars 2. And we have all these different pictures. Guido taking pictures with celebrities, a bunch of race cars from Cars 2, as well as Tex. There are racing posters, logos, a hat that the fans wear, the sign in the airport in Cars 2. It's just full of Easter eggs. And Lizzie's here has the same case that literally everybody else has, but these. Time to uh, have a field day. We'll go get them at that, sorry guys. Alright, so I'm probably gonna get this and this, these two things, but I think I'm gonna come back for them, we'll go check out Sarge's. So what I didn't realize is they even included the abandoned buildings, which I didn't think were here. But the moment is an additional store, uh, and that's attached to the oil pan, which is an additional additional store, which seems to mainly have die cast. So check it out. We got really creepy shirts. Some things just don't translate well. Hold on. Let me get that for the next weird product video. McQueen and Jackson Storm socks. Yeah. Yep, that's, that's what I want. Double push. Always a nice touch. Got some art prints because. Why is this sold? We got Lou and Hamid and Doc and Louise. Yeah, hi. I want the one on the back of Flo. Yeah, that's adorable. Hold on, let's get a picture of Flo for weird products. Oh, uh, guys, they're we are hitting the weird product jackpot today. This is a smaller one. The oil pan store had the same exact die casts in Disney store cars. Nothing too special there, but it was the only place that sold play sets. More specifically. A little set from 2017, and the XRS Mud Racing Loop. This right here is brand new, like people first found it a few weeks ago. But it's on sale here, it's a new arrival, yeah. I didn't even know it was out yet. We're up to Sarge. Oh my god, it's the whole precision series. Precision series sets. They are all from the first wave. Shame we're never gonna get a few of them. Right up here, this guy was cancelled. The uh, WGP guy back there was cancelled. That's the prototype for Alex Carville. Some of these, I think, are the prototypes. Um, we got that. Prototype, prototype, prototype. I think that one's a prototype at least. Alright. 
savory products much. Emphasis on the much. And one for McQueen also. I think I've seen them before actually. No, I don't think that's healthy, sorry. Here, check this out. This is in the oil pan window. The RPM bottles, Octane Gain, Vitaline, uh, Vitaline like white canisters, Nitroid bottle, Leak Less Clutch Aid, Vitaline. Sorry, no, Nitroid bottle, Leak Less Drip Pan, the actual pan. So we got a gas pan up there, and over here, down here, we have a no stall, as well as a new easy idle problem, Octane Gain, as well. No stall boxes and these you know, the yeah. We've got like all the little logos and other things to attach. Don't worry, they have party ice, whatever the heck that means. There's Derek Decal's Dobbs' uh, painting, which is a nice touch. Great English place. Love happy place. So, yeah, the wait time ended up being over two hours, but we had a fast pass, so we were on in a good 20 30 minutes. I wish I was filming this, but the girl making the announcement there ended it with the least enthusiastic chow I've ever heard. And I've heard a whole lot of kachows in my life. I'm not very proud about that fact. This canonically is the radiator spring. This is what it is. As I just mentioned in the queue area of the ride, you pass by the original radiator spring in the whole Stanley's Oasis area as seen in Time Travel Mater. There's even this whole sign if you want to pause the video and read it.
as always, Radiator Springs Racers was awesome. And by the way, my car actually won. Yeah, that that was amazing. Uh, I filmed like the whole outside section, hung onto my phone for dear life. I'm sorry if the audio is a bit bad, but, but man, that's such a great ride. Such a, a great one. Let's see if we can get some people going by. Yeah. That was cool. Alright, I think we're off to Lizzie to buy literally every diecast exclusive video. So. I loved your work in Cars too. Hey everybody, thanks for visiting my favorite place, Radiator Springs. But we didn't have time to pick everything up at Lizzie's since our one hour fast pass window for Toy Story Mania was about to end. So we headed off to Pixar Pier, which was newly refurbished at the time into Pixar Pier. It just became Pixar Pier last year. It was previously, I think, Paradise Pier? That's the name of a hotel. I'm not sure if that was the name of the land too. And as an added bonus, Real Gone from the first Cars movie was playing while we went there. Followed by Remember Me from Coco. Toy Story Mania, a super fun time from one of the only rides that's also a game. The only other one I can think of is the Buzz Lightyear ride, which is also a shooter ride, just like Toy Story Mania. Disney, what's up with you and making Toy Story shooter rides? Aside from those two, the newly opened Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run is also a game. You have people doing different roles, and in the end you even score points, but still, not many games. And Toy Story Mania is amazing. Rack up points by shooting targets. It's simple, but it's so much fun. Since the ride's in 3D, I couldn't take footage of it, but I did get a shot of my score, as well as the score of the person next to me. <laughs> the Knickknack store, named after Knickknack, a Pixar short about a snowman in the snow globe, falling in love and wanting to be in another snow globe, something like that. I never watched it. Has its walls covered in storyboards from a bunch of classic Pixar movies, including Cars. They also had art prints you could buy and a few nice posters on the wall, like this Paris one and that Doc one over there. I don't think those were for sale. After that, it was back to Cars Land to buy everything they had. Like, okay, well, not not everything, but all the podcasts that were exclusive to there that I could find. There was another family in the Lizzie store with a little kid, and the father just cracked me up by calling Jackson Storm the evil guy. Yeah. Well, there's a... Uh... Here is just. Mm, yeah. What color is it? It's just green. Alright, then here we go. Alright, ready? One.
think these are. Uh, I think that's actually. Uh, I think that's actually it. So it turns out that they're missing two of Luigi's guys, but that's okay. I don't know if they're still the same one. red one and the gold one and then all the singles they had. Alright, so we've devised a plan. We just had lunch, then we're going to, right, we're going to Soren, which is right, oh, it's right there. And then we'll be going off to the Monsters Inc. ride, which I love, I remember doing it last time. Then, then to the Oh yeah. then to the Little Mermaid ride. We might end up doing Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Probably not today, then. If smaller aviators don't measure up to the height indicator on the seat, just put the belt through the loop in the set of strap before buckling. Soren's really one of those rides you just have to experience for yourself. Um, we just got off of it. Now we're on to the Monsters Inc. ride, but really, it's one of the. Alright, you gotta experience for yourself. And they temporarily changed it back to Soren over California, Soren over the world. But they temporarily changed it back up until August 31st. So at least we got to see the change. Fly on the Trial Detention Agency. There has never been a trial security breach in Monstropolis. Soren and Monsters Inc. were great as always. And after we went on them, we went over to this Avengers area, which is soon gonna be connected to Marvel Land, whenever the heck that opens. Florida due to Universal in Florida having the rights to Marvel rides, isn't allowed to do uh, Marvel rides for the Avengers or X-Men or Fantastic Four, basically any major groups. But California can. And since that deal was made before the Guardians of the Galaxy movie came out and before they were made popular, Guardians of the Galaxy can be used in Florida. That's why they're making a ride there. Here in California, they can do as much Marvel stuff as they want, although the presence of Marvel was very limited. Just a few meet and greets for Captain America, Black Panther, and Captain Marvel, and this little themed area, including the Spider-Man section, which had some really nice Easter eggs, like this Daily Bugle poster with a webbed up picture of J. Jonah Jameson. This Avengers area had very little, though, aside from just a big Avengers logo and a jet, which I assume would be a reference for Captain Marvel since she was an Air Force pilot. There's this big animation building where you could take classes to learn how to draw certain characters, and while you wait outside, they're playing all these slideshows of concept art and other things for a bunch of different Disney and Pixar movies. And we were fortunate enough to watch their reel for Cars, which has some pretty odd concept art. There are some interesting older ideas here, like the firehouse being its own building instead of just being combined with the courthouse. And Sarge's eyes here. What's up with Sarge's eyes? That's horrifying! You could also see a bit more nightmare fuel here with these tractors. This was just a model sheet showing how they would be based off of cows. So they basically superimposed a cow head onto the body of a tractor and worked things out from there. Sally here has a cone trailer that never appeared in the movie. Also have a little bit of McQueen, number 57, as he was in early concept art. And just like that, they transitioned into their real movie selves. I took one of the animation classes and learned how to draw Minnie Mouse. It was pretty interesting because you learn a different character in each class. This was the only one I took on the trip, though. With Soren and Monsters Inc. done, it was time for the next part of our grand plan. Go to Mater's Junkyard Jamboree. And the line here was full of different Easter eggs that were so fun to find. An Easter egg for every single car's tune. Check this out, all the stuff from the first tunes with the Rusty Squad Mater icon. It's the Mater Hawk logo. Talk not cereal. And a hubcap for Mater Greater, Mater Greater signs, NASCAR, that links from Heavy Metal Mater Gun Cannons. That is cool, Mater Private Eye window, all the NASCAR stuff. The Area 51, parking area 51. Oh, Mater Door. Wait, hold on, how can I miss the Japanese sign over there? That's everything. And the oil can Mator drink is over there, the crushed one. I also forgot about the light year tires from Mater Private Eye. 
got some additional stuff, guitars, heavy metal made of poster, uh, better luck with tournament and stuff. Here. I didn't film on the ride because the tractors just whip around, but I did get footage of other people on the ride while I was waiting for it. <laughs> After that, it was off to the Little Mermaid ride, which I've got to say is probably my favorite of the movie-based dark rides. It's got great effects, like this one right here where you're submerging underwater, and it's got great animatronics. And who can forget about that under the sea scene? here now we're gonna go back to the hotel for a little bit so yeah bye now a few hours after that we were already going back into Disneyland we added a 50 to the front the first ride we went on here was the Haunted Mansion which before the strip I'd actually never been on so there's that and it was actually and this was actually a great weekend to go to Disneyland because the Haunted Mansion was celebrating its 50th anniversary. So there were a bunch of commemorative pins and very hard to find food containers, but more on those eventually. Anyway, it's a really great ride, which is something the whole general public knew uh, all these years, but I didn't, so there you go. All the ghosts are reflecting off of another surface, something along those lines, and they're disappearing on camera. Hmm. After that, we get to the attic where a very strange Disney ride trend continues. What's up with Disney rides and decapitation? If you really look for it, there's quite a bit of it. Some of it coming from her, and that is what we call a smooth transition, kids. So that exists. Okay. After we go past the bride whose name is literally, wait for it, Constance Hatchaway, because she has a hatchet. Alright, so the guy that we just passed by was the Hatbox Ghost, who was in Disneyland at the opening, but was then removed. His gimmick is that his head slips down through his body and falls into his hatbox, and that effect just became way too difficult to maintain, so they took him out of the ride and added him back in in 2015 for the 50th anniversary of Disneyland. By then, technology had advanced to a point where his face could just be a digital projection, making it much less difficult, and his head wouldn't have to physically move. It's nowhere near as impressive as it was before, but whatever. Our next stop is Galaxy's Edge, and as a guy who spends way too much time in his life researching really minor things in Star Wars, I was really excited to go, but first we had to take a detour through the Hundred Acre Woods. That's what we call an even smoother transition, yeah! Alright, so... I'm gonna go on record and say this is probably the weirdest scene in any Disney ride. This is Winnie the Pooh's the honey dr dream. It's it's weird. It's really weird. Those things up there are kind of horrifying. Oh man. This ride replaced the Country Bear Jamboree, which still exists in Florida. On the wall of the Country Bear Jamboree, there are these three animal heads named Buff, Max, and Melvin. And you could actually find them up top in this ride in this scene. And they're right up there. Did you see them? No? Well, neither did my camera. After that, it was finally time to go to the planet of Batuu as we went to Galaxy's Edge. 
And let me tell you, this place is amazing. There are so many Easter eggs and references and tiny little, uh, little nods at all Star Wars materials from the movies to the shows to the comics. It is awesome. They really did an amazing job at making you feel like you are in the universe. Right when you walk in, there's a huge model of an X-Wing and a huge model of an A-Wing. But apparently, my mind was on something else. Oh my god, it's a gong droid. It's multiple gong droids. They have the model from episode 4 and the model from episode 1 and... Uh... Oh, right, sorry. That was a Resistance A-Wing. Right here is a Resistance X-Wing looking awesome. Everything was so accurate, Chewbacca here was perfectly in character as someone tried to give him a high five and he just stuck his arm back up because he didn't understand it. Front and center in Galaxy's Edge's Black Spire Outpost, a huge shopping center full of a bunch of different stores selling items, all of which are supposed to exist in the universe of Star Wars. Things like dolls that are made to look handcrafted or instruments from the movies, Jedi robes, Jedi busts, and other things from the Jedi Temple. You could build a droid, build a lightsaber, buy a remote control version of a creature. It's insane how much time and effort was put into this. An R1 BU4D in, in those two. You could build yourself an astromech droid. It's as simple as that. And just like everywhere else in Galaxy's Edge, it's full of amazing detail. Like this leg, conveyor belt up top for all the astromech droid legs, and dismantled pieces from a ton of different droids all around the back wall. From K2 droids to that guy who looks way too much like BB-8, like color scheme and all, to the dismantled head of a PZ unit. Look it up. And in this restaurant, there's a huge fire powered by this pod racer engine here with a droid in the background operating it. In this store, you could buy yourself an animal. We've got a nice animatronic loth cat sleeping over there. Bunch of stuff for sale. And this beautiful thing! Yeah, I think it's a rock ward. It's kind of disgusting. Our next stop was Doc Ondar's shop. Basically, if you know who the Collector from Marvel is, he's just the Star Wars equivalent of the Collector. He just collects things from all over the place, and as compared to the Collector who keeps them, he sells them. Not much to see here, just the Millennium Falcon! The Millennium Falcon ride Smuggler's Run is really cool, and I'll try to sum up everything about it in the next 34 seconds, because that's how long this clip is. Basically, you have six people, two pilots, two engineers, and two gunners, and you have to go on this mission for Hondo Onaka, a character from the Clone Wars uh, animated show. Each person, again, has one of those roles. As the pilots, you fly. As the gunners, you shoot. And as the engineers, I don't know, I wasn't the engineers, I think you just like fire the torpedoes, you know, you, you uh, tend to the ship. I was only ever the pilot, which might be the most stressful role. Oh my god, we're on it. We're on the Falcon. We're in a bit of a situation with the first order. The, the, the first order, excellent. We're not authorized to pick up the cargo. We're picking up the cargo, good, good. They've accused us of stealing. Well, I see now you're breaking up. I cannot hear you. What? Oh, no. What? Don't you dare. I don't. Oh. Unfortunate technical difficulty. Boring conversation, anyway. Hondo's animatronic looked so good, they even used the original voice actor. Is where you come in. Let us use the ship. 
We'll get you the supplies you need. That was insane. So we have six people, two are assigned to each role. I was one of the pilots, and you also have two gunners, two engineers. So I was the co-pilot actually, so I got to pull the hyperspace lever and the um, and up and down. It was awesome though. We had a whole whole mission shoot down a train. So after that run, these guys over here are probably gonna be after us, but we're good. So I hope. I hope we're cool. Also in Galaxy's Edge they had blue milk. It was kind of gross. And up next was It's a Small World, a ride that you either love or hate, and I fall on the love side. What I especially love about this version of the ride, as compared to the Florida version, is that the Disneyland version here has a ton of different cameos from different Disney characters that were added in a while back. <laughs> And once we got out of Small World, there were fireworks lighting up the sky and projections filling the Small World building. And that ended the second day. to the third day, which we spent in Disneyland. And only Disneyland. It is another day here. It's like 8 in the morning. We're going to be heading out to Disneyland soon when it opens at 9. It is also the 50th anniversary of the Haunted Mansion, so that's cool. I guess I'll go on there that. I went on it for the first time yesterday. It's good. Mickey Mouse was hanging out on Main Street, and I think he noticed me the hi, hi Mickey um good job buying Fox our first stop was Tomorrowland since we hadn't been there yet our goal was to try to get on Star Tours before the line got too long we're gonna see if we could get on Star Tours if the wait isn't that bad we got lucky the wait time was only five minutes C-3PO wasn't always your pilot on Star Tours. Originally, it was this droid named Rex, R3X. It turns out that Rex became a defective droid, and now he just hangs out at the bottom of the line of Star Tours, occasionally blurting out one of his original line's dialogue. But I don't think that's the last we'll be seeing of this guy. It's free time! Good thing, though, because all this working is a real drain on my battery. I'll just take five. Alright, enough with Rex. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Yeah, that's what I just said. Star Tours is always great, but now we're on to the buzz ride. Battle stations, report to the flight deck for immediate launch to infinity and beyond. The buzz ride, just like Toy Story Mania, has some really great rewritability. I doubt that's a word, and yeah, I know my score is terrible, but whatever. The good thing about it compared to Toy Story Mania is that the lines for this ride are never as long. Especially in the morning, so you could just go on it again and again. Which we did. Two more times. We'll retrieve the power cells while the rest of you concentrate on those robots. You'll rendezvous at Planet Z. I will remain here at Star Command to coordinate the mission. Space Mountain here has temporarily been given a Star Wars themed overlay. Now it's called Hyperspace Mountain. You, uh, you see what they did there? That pun's about as bad as mine. But for now, I decided to pass on it. Up next, we headed back to Galaxy's Edge because we had a reservation at Ogus Cantina. A reservation to look around. I'm not kidding. You need a reservation regardless of whether or not you're planning on buying something. We headed off expertly dodging stormtroopers. 
All right, well, we did something much less heroic. We just kept on walking. They didn't go near us. The cantina wasn't really all that exciting. It had a very uninspired design with the inside literally just being a circle with 90% standing room. But the fact that Rex was there made up for everything. They put so much care into Galaxy's Edge that they even brought R3X Rex back as the DJ at the cantina. All they had to do was make this guy a new animatronic, give him a new backstory, a new paint job, new dialogue from the original voice actor, and then program some dance moves, if you consider these dance moves. I don't know. And just like that, we were already out of there. But not before getting one last look at Rex. On our way out of Galaxy's Edge, we found Ray and Chewie trying to fix his X-Wing. I don't think that's something you could fix. I think that's a stationary prop, but whatever, guys. Just ahead is the most treacherous part of our journey. That island on the starboard side of the Mimesis. Alright, so, we just had lunch. Now we're going back. I'll check it out. We are going... Back to the Millennium Falcon, back to Indiana Jones, back to the Haunted Mansion. It's the 50th anniversary of the Haunted Mansion today, so you know, you gotta go on the, on the day of the 50th anniversary. Yeah. So, yeah, we're off to Galaxy's Edge again. That's all the footage of the Millennium Falcon ride because I had to pilot that ship. After we were done with that, we stopped on over to one of the stores where I picked up um, something very interesting. I'll just let the clip play. You guys, you guys are looking at the proud owner of a Kowakian monkey lizard. What? You couldn't expect me to go to Galaxy's Edge and not buy a remote control version of a minor alien, right? Look at him in there. I need a name. He's got a little handle that moves the mouth and the neck, and then also a magnet so you can put it under your shirt. Jones ride continued to be one of my favorites. It's just so cool. After going on Smuggler's Run again and on Indiana Jones again, it was time to go on the Haunted Mansion again on the day of its anniversary. Outside of the Haunted Mansion, once we got off of it, I actually ran into Offhand Disney. He runs a great YouTube channel where he talks about Disneyland. I would be playing the actual audio that I recorded of myself telling you all this when I was at Disneyland, but my perfectly fine audio was instead interrupted by some kid's pirate obsession. Put his uh, link to his channel in the description. He's a really nice guy. After going back to the hotel for a few hours, then going to dinner, we had reservations in downtown Disney, we headed back out to Disneyland. In one of the buildings on Main Street, they had an exhibit for the Haunted Mansion for its anniversary, featuring little clay vignette models and concept art and paintings that weren't used. I'll just let this play out. After that, we went back to Tomorrowland to check out the Star Wars Launch Bay, which is a whole exhibit uh, showcasing Star Wars props and models and everything. 
And also, we watch Boba Fett interview some random people. Question. The bounty was big Character Talison Lintra. You've never heard of her because she died two minutes into the movie. After that, it was time to go on the Nemo submarine voyage ride, previously 20,000 leagues under the sea. The view was nice and all, although you were only about a foot underwater. If you looked out of your tiny little window, you could see the surface. But my problem was with the tiny little window. They're still using the submarines from when the ride originally opened in, like, the 50s, 60s, 70s. And so the seats are really tiny. It's difficult to fit a lot of people. It's very cramped. There are tiny little windows. It was a very nice ride, but I would just suggest making a new submarine. I know that would cost a lot, but hey, it's Disney. They've got money. Maybe a bit too much sometimes. After that, I did something that I originally didn't want to do. I went on Hyperspace Mountain, and it was so great, I, I just got to show you the footage of me freaking out after I went on it. So remember how I said I wasn't going on this Space Mountain? I just did. It was really cool because it, it, it was the whole Star Wars overlay, and it was awesome. I just got off of that. Up next, uh, extra credit points for anyone who counts how many times I say up next or after that in this video. Anyway, up next we went into Toontown, which is kind of a hidden area, and it also closes earlier than the rest of the park. So this was our first time in this section of the park. I don't know why we didn't go last time. It's a really interactive place. That wasn't very funny. If can't fix it, we won't. That's a mentality I want. Another really interactive part about Toontown is that you could go into Mickey, Minnie, and Donald's houses. Well, Donald's is a boat, but you get my point. At the end of Mickey's house, there's even a meet and greet for him. We didn't go to that, but we did explore the house. Have fun sleeping tonight. Everything in Toontown is full of jokes and gags and just little things to look out for. For some weird reason, I didn't get a shot of me walking into Minnie's house, but here's Minnie's house. She's got a creepy porcelain frog. Minnie's house is definitely a lot more interactive than Mickey's. Turn a little dial on her dishwasher and this happens. After Mickey and Minnie's houses, it was time for Donald Duck's boat. I'm on a boat. They 
They also have Goofy's house, which I don't think you could go in. It's just a little kid play area. Hi, everybody. It's me, Goofy. Don't make me call the police on you again. This is an illegal attempt. Stop trying to get into my house. I don't want you here. Uh -huh. Following our experience in Toontown, we went back to the Alice ride. And in line, I was able to get some footage of the teacup ride. Back on Main Street. I made Pinocchio dance in this little machine thing, and I must say, I did a great job. Sort of. Okay, well, not really. Picking up these pins, this Duke Kaboom one because it was the best part of Toy Story 4, and this nice little limited edition Galaxy's Edge one. And that wrapped up another day in the parks. I stopped by the World of Disney Store and picked up the Luxo Ball from Toy Story and the other Pixar shorts. And back at the hotel, they had this up for the Haunted Mansion anniversary. And that wrapped up day three. Saturday was the last day, and I started off the day by heading over to the Paradise Pier, which is the other hotel. It's where we stayed last time. Disney store stock here has been really bad just all around, which is sad because it was pretty good last year. But we do have a flying McQueen because that's how cars work apparently. The plan for this day was to go to Disneyland in the morning, then go to California Adventure in the afternoon, then at night, like 8, 9 o'clock, go back to Disneyland. You gotta make the most out of your last day. In Florida, there's no attraction inside of the castle, but here in California and Disneyland, there's a whole Sleeping Beauty walkthrough, so enjoy that, because I think I filmed the whole thing.
hanging out over there. Third time's the charm, right? Our mission is to find his robots and his secret weapon and blast them. Green Squadron will retrieve the power cells while the rest of you concentrate on those robots. Go. Mission accomplished, Space Rangers. It's been an honor serving. Yeah, Indiana Jones again, because this one never gets old. That ride never got old, but it did get stuck. Sorry about that. Basically, the ride got stuck while we were in line, and we got it up and running about 5-10 minutes later. But some of the effects were off, like the lighting and music were kind of weird at some points, and the boulder effect didn't work, so, you know, it wasn't as good the third time, but... That pun was. Look, I've been working on editing this same video for the last five days. Eventually, you just get kind of tired and just start making bad puns. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you have to sit through that, viewer. The next ride we went on was the Haunted Mansion. Again, for the third time. Noticing a trend here with the rides today? Anyway, there's this really cool effect in this part of the ride where after the attic, you start going down and there are like ghosts floating all around you. My camera couldn't pick that up. <laughs> After going on the Haunted Mansion again, we went on Pirates of the Caribbean again. And after this, it was just about time to go get some lunch. Lunch was at the Red Rose Tavern recently rethemed to a Beauty and the Beast restaurant. Originally, it was the Pinocchio Village House. And that really shows in the architecture. It looks very Pinocchio. Here's our favorite barge-sized man. It's roughly the size of one, apparently. Also, this is a thing. Of course, it's supposed to say waste, please, but it, it wants wassail. Whatever that is. So for the 50th anniversary of the Haunted Mansion, they're selling these popcorn, drink, and food dispensers. They're on the street, Hitchhiking Ghosts, and we were able to get two. They're super rare out there. Selling for $200 on eBay already. They're selling out. We were able to get the two that weren't the popcorn ones. I'll show it to you guys. Alright, check these guys out. We only have two. Like I said before, we're missing the third one, the fatter guy. He's the popcorn container. This guy right here, his name was... Uh, Ezra Bean, as you can see, he was a cup, which uh, is where his really weird gimmick comes in. That is, then you can uh, open up the back, or oh yeah, you can open up the top. There's a little cup in there. That's kind of disgusting. Um, is there a straw? I don't know. It wasn't there when we bought these. Wait, hold on. Did I just ask if there was a straw? I literally just finished talking about the straw. His head is a straw. I I'm sorry. I could let some mistakes in my videos slide. That one, that one was just stupidity on my part. Anyway, back to the video. And then we have the cheapest light ever. Ooh, wow, look at that. Go pay $200 on eBay for it. Then we got this guy right here. Gus, who was a little food container. They do uh, clip together. Sorry for the terrible movement here. <laughs> Doing this one-handed. Here's a container for food. And... Wowie, he lights up just as poorly. These guys are fetching such a high price online. And then as long as we're on the subject here, here is the Pixar Luxo ball here. Very cool. My next stop was Hyperspace Mountain because I really wanted to do it again. And it was just as good the second time. All right, you know what? This right here was a perfectly fine clip until this happened again. I don't get it. I, I, I really don't. Why are all these kids yelling about pirates? Was it some sort of secret code? Alright, Rookie. This is a very dangerous mission. That's why you're only on the lookout. I'm gonna need you to stay out here while I go into the museum and I grab the art piece, okay? So stay out here and look for any cops. If a cop spots you, you remember the word you've got to yell, right? You remember our code word? Mm-hmm. Good. I'm going in. Good luck. Watch my back. Hey! You there! Why'd your friend go into that museum? Pirates! Gotta love those pirates. 
Anyway, after we did that, we headed back to the hotel. We're out of here, we're gonna go to California Adventure and all that, and back here at night. Radiator Springs Racers is such a great ride. Of course, that was first when we came back to California Adventure. You know, every third blink is slower. I bet you it's actually like that. It's gotta be, right? They couldn't have done that. They couldn't have made this without doing that. Back to the den of one Sarge. So cool and spliced the cancel cards. Looking for any colors in there to pick up. Um, I have the blue and yellow. I actually kind of want to pick up the uh, Cars 2 and McQueen and it's going to make them out. So I'm picking up the World Grand Prix McQueen, the Cars 2 one, and also this 3 pack because I wanted to get these 3 when they were out and I never did and now they're here and they're not at the Disney store, my Disney store anymore. So I'm going to pick up the Mater, Finn, and Holly pack which is really cool. Considering that I don't think Mattel ever made a Finn with weapons, so... I have to check it out. This Brent Mustang burger is either a prototype or the cancelled talking one. That is the can the, the released talking barrel. Two Timothy Two Strokes, which is ironic because two is in his name. Um, that's definitely the prototype for Brent with camera and uh, Lee Rossi up there, which is pretty cool. Pretty interesting how many of these are. I have quite a few cancelled ones and it's pretty interesting how many of these are the prototypes. Over in this building, the Blue Sky Cellar, they had a whole display for the making of Pixar Pier. I'll just let this one play too. Oh man, uh, Carsland now uh, comes with its very own uh, English class test, huh? Speaking of Pixar Pier, that was the next stop, and pay close attention to the lamp. It moves around every once in a while. Behold the best store name of all time. Jack Jack's Cookie Num Nums. All jokes aside though, these cookies were really good. That cookie was incredible. A pun very intended. No, I didn't actually go on the Incredicoaster, but I was able to get some good footage of it. The next ride of the day was Toy Story Mania. Again, like I said earlier, it's got such a great replay value. <laughs> What a legend. What a legend. The next few minutes are spent exploring Pixar Pier.
Guys, Mr. Potato Head froze. Like, I'm not kidding. Look at that. That was not edited in any way. That's just raw footage. He froze. Rewriting the Little Mermaid ride was next. And come to think of it, I think every single ride we won on this day was just a ride we'd already been on. Remember that animation building that I showed a while back? The building that had the car's concept art video and everything? Well, also in that building is an area called the Sorcerer's Workshop, where you could do some animation and also find out what Disney character you're the most like. That was the next stop. And by do some animation, I mean spin these zoetropes until they make a moving image. I've always loved these things, I've always thought that they were just so cool. They had multiple ones, like this sorcerer Mickey, and um, Alice up next here. And it's simple, all you have to do is try spinning. That's a good trick! And little kid Anakin would agree with that statement. These didn't work as well. Your goal is basically to spin it so fast that your mind is tricked into thinking that both pictures are on this little board at the same exact time. It didn't work for me, at least not that well. Maybe I was doing something wrong. Thanks, thanks for the info, dude. Thanks. It is with the greatest pleasure that we will now show you which Disney character is most like you. My assistant, please. And this was pretty cool. Oh, when the buttons worked. Yeah, it was it was it was pretty difficult to. <laughs> yeah, as you can see here from how clearly I'm struggling pressing this, it didn't work all that well, and it wasn't just mine. Multiple of the machines were kind of weird. They just weren't very responsive. Do you see yourself as more sensible? Oh. Are you ruled more by your passion of power? Or your logical head? Do you usually like to plan things out? Yeah. Or wait to see what happens? Very good. One more question we must ask. Would you rather eat lunch with nice people for lunch? It's a, it's a very... Very tempting answer here. I'm sorry, I'll just have to go with that one then. As a leader, you are wonderful at keeping the peace while raising people's spirits. You are most like Woody. Oh, cool. That's cool. There you have it. After finding out that I was Woody, I found out that there is a Marvel themed gift shop at the end of the Guardians of the Galaxy ride. That ride was one that I never ended up going on, but I had to check out the gift shop. And what trip to California Adventure at night would be complete without taking a walk through Radiator Springs at night? The neon is all so accurate to the movies, it looks just like the buildings in the scene where everything lights up in the first cars, but even better because they have all these lights on the back on Cadillac Range. Everything just looks so cool. So I'm going to take this time right now to explain what the plan for the rest of the night here was. After this, we had a fast pass for Toy Story Mania so we could go on it one last time. Then, we were going to go head back to Disneyland for a little bit. I stayed on this Sarge logo for so long, not only because I wanted my camera to focus, but because it does the actual uh, lighting effect, which wasn't used in the Precision Series version of the Sarge building. Oh, 
Hits. Um, see, here's the song that was actually in the movie. Let's take a good look in the mirror here. It's just so immersive. Everything's just like in the movies aside from that. Yeah, the Collector's my favorite Cars character too. After that, it was time to say goodbye to Cars Land. The ultimate Cars experience. That sounds like a virtual reality game. The ultimate Cars experience. You are Lightning McQueen. On the way out of Pixar Pier, I picked up a Pixar Pier pin. I say that sometimes fast. As well as the cruise control pin that I was considering buying earlier. And here's that cruise pin alongside an Avengers pin and the Pixar Pier pin that I picked up. Well, we are leaving California Adventure now. It's been really fun. We really didn't do all that much when we came back to Disneyland for the last time. We just kind of walked around while fireworks and shows played all around us. It was pretty difficult to walk around though because they had everything like quartered off because of the parades. That also meant that it was pretty difficult to film because everybody was just moving in a very confined space, but I tried my best. Once we finally made our way out of Main Street, we went over to the New Orleans Square area and the Frontierland area where the Phantasmic show was playing. Why is Disney playing all their different shows at the exact same time? It just seems like a weird business strategy. Whoa! Whoa, fireworks! Wait, what was I saying? Sorry, I got distracted by Disney exploding the sky. You do this on a nightly basis, Disney. The whole place is covered in, like, smoky fog by the time that this is done. I'm serious. But everybody being distracted by the fireworks meant it was our time to strike. In these boxes was the final one of the hitchhiking ghosts. In these boxes, they have the final one of the hitchhiking ghosts, and we're getting it, so now we'll have all three. These guys are going for a ton of money online. Now we have all three. So we can sell them for $180 on eBay if we really want to. Still won't be able to buy you a motor speeder at the South Set, though. And here are all three of them. The one that we were missing before not only has a lanyard and a special 50th anniversary logo on his suitcase, he plays music. He plays the one of the songs from the Haunted Mansion, which explains why he was the rarest one. The person playing Chewbacca continues to be like my favorite person ever. Just look at him watching the fireworks, it's so great. We decided to walk through Galaxy's Edge one last time before leaving. Why, customer? I'll leave you guys with that one. And so, I made my way out of Disneyland for the last time of the trip. It was an amazing trip, and I'm so glad that I had the chance to film it all for you guys. Anyway guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching this video. Whether you watch the whole thing, or just five minutes, or just the car sections, it doesn't matter to me. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it and being in Disneyland. I'll see you guys next time. Bye now.